Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Perucho back with another episode of Purcast, and we're on episode four. And our guest today is Fieldy Sketch One Hundred and One. Say hello. Hi, it's great to、uh, be invited for this podcast. I'm really looking forward to、uh, what we're gonna talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very confused. <laughs> I'm so glad you're able to come here and have the time to be on this podcast. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm again very glad that you、uh, invited me, and I'm looking forward to what we'll be talking about. All right, the way we usually kick this off, as usual, we'll、I'll、start off with how where we met actually, and、mm. where we met was Bloomfield College, obviously. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah.、Um, but the real question is how we met, because I remember when I was in, I remember you took this class too on、um, design thinking and practice. I was doing like a、mm. research kind of thingy, and I needed participants for my part, and I was looking around like people I know to ask, and then I think Jamil、uh-huh. told me to like. Ask you stuff too, and then I'm like, I don't know her, but、uh, sure, I guess <laughs> I will try to meet new people. Oh my gosh! See, I have such a bad memory because, like,、uh, I don't really remember it too well. So I do apologize on my end because, like, I it, it's hard for me to like、uh, make friends with people until like I、uh, fully get to know them.、Mm-hmm. So. You can keep explaining how like we kind of like got to meet more because like I said I just don't remember it so well. Yeah, cause um I think, like I said I don't recall too, but I remember I always remember that interaction where I think you were in the cat lab, where people like、mm-hmm. you know do their work and such, and you were working、yeah. as the one of the people. Oh, the know, lab assistant. Mhm. Yeah, and you're like、oh, monitoring yeah. people and such. I remember you were there,、yeah. and it was and it was your um it was your shift. And then I'm like, oh, she's there. I could probably ask her now. And then、oh. that's one of the interactions I remember. Oh, okay, yeah, because I do remember working as a lab assistant, and like, it wasn't it wasn't a bad job to be there. Like, I mean, there were times where it was like kind of slow. So either, if I remember correctly, I think I was just mostly either drawing or maybe like Jamil was there to keep me company. Maybe Kyrie was there. I'm not、mm-hmm. fully sure. I I feel like we started to become friends a little bit more when I think maybe it was when you started dorming with Kai or maybe you were、uh, hanging around more with Jamil. I don't I don't know because like again like it's very hard to pinpoint like how we started to like get to know each other more. Yeah. So and I think it like is different for both perspectives because I would assume oh I think we became more friends because of you dorming with.、Um, With Kai, but I, I, it could also be like you being friends with Jamil. So I'm trying to like figure out. I don't know. Like when did when do you think like we started like being friends? To be honest, because I really, I, I have a hard time pinpointing. Oh,、um, mind you guys. Um, Kyrie and Jimmy are two、uh, other friends that we know that are like. Oh yeah. Kind of. Well, mostly Kyrie, Jamil, and um, she、uh, hang. They're like a group together for the most part. Would you say、mm-hmm. so? And then that's and then、oh, I、yeah. met one of them. In a class I was in, and then that's how I met the other two. As to say, how can I say this? Like where I start to know you more is kind of vague for me as well because, I, to be honest, I don't know. I think we started、yeah. talking more <laughs> during our third year of college because third year I started、uh-huh. dorming, and then that's when I usually hang out in these guys's、um, suite, and then I would、mm-hmm. see her there sometimes, and then we just mess around there. Yeah, cause like I,、uh, I do remember like you know like getting to know you more at、uh, either with like I said before like you either being friends with Jamil or like you dorming with Kai and like、uh, when I first、uh, saw you, my first immediate reaction was like, oh, he seems really cool and he likes anime, <laughs> <laughs>、yeah. and I was like, oh,、uh, well, I, you had like Dragon Ball posters and stuff, so like、mm. just by like、uh, that alone, I just was like automatically like, oh. A, a fellow weeb. There's another weeb in here. <laughs> yeah, it's freaking、But、Dragon I... Ball's. Like, I think、okay. <laughs> one of the animes I watched the most. What were you saying? Oh no, because like、uh, I think aside from Dragon Ball,、uh, I know that you were also into video games. I don't remember which one you were playing, but I I I thought, oh wow, like 
aside from being a weeb, he's like a gamer. <laughs> but Maybe. like I like I can tell you're like nice. So you're super friendly and very funny. <laughs> Makes good jokes. I like him. Yeah, I can mess around with him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. When we met in college, we were in two different majors. So that's how like we we never had a class together. I know that for sure, right? Uh, I don't think so. I don't really recall too well, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't think we have. Yeah, we don't, we didn't have classes together, like I was saying before. We had two different majors, as I was majoring mostly uh, game majors. Um, she majored in 2D animation, uh, if I'm correct? Yes, 2D animation. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have, like, any reasoning on why you wanted to major to the animation? Or, like, what inspired you um, to major there? Funnily enough, originally, I wanted to be a veterinarian. Really? I wanted to, because I loved animals. I mean, I still do. So mm -hmm. I wanted to, like, focus more on, like, you know, being a vet because I loved animals that much. But, like, because of, like, some things that came up and because of, like, I don't know what I have, it prevents me from, like, looking at my own blood so when uh, i look at my own blood i i pass out so i can't see myself being in a field where like there is a possibility that you know i can't do like proper surgery or if i accidentally cut myself i would like automatically just pass out so that's it, it's a very like concerning thing so i was like you know what this isn't for me so mm -hmm. which which did sadden me a bit not gonna lie because like i said like i, I adore animals since i was a kid i was always surrounded by like um animals constantly so how it all started was i i loved watching cartoons as a kid i'm pretty sure everybody at yeah. a young age loved watching cartoons and like I, th I think i just had a massive imagination so when i was younger uh i had a cousin where like we would constantly like make up stories together like i would make up stories to like entertain her while she was like oh i want to add some stuff to it as well so we would talk a lot about like stories and made up characters and I think she was, like, the one that kind of inspired me the most to be, like, you know what, I actually want to pursue uh, making cartoons and, like, drawing, and, and I want that to be as a career because, like, I adored drawing so much. I endured, and I endured, what am I talking about? <laughs> I, I fully enjoyed, like, making things, creating things. I, I think it'll also, me drawing all started because of, I, I hope there's people who love Sonic, but I love the Sonic series, so I would, I remembered making, like, characters out of, like, Sonic stuff based, mm. but then later on, like, I, I started, like, uh, changing my, my art style, I started learning more, I started practicing more, but if I had to pinpoint how it all started, it was mostly because of her, uh. um, which I, I, I still, I'm glad, you know, because, like, at least she, you know, gave me, uh, I guess, a new perspective on what I wanted to do as a career path, so. Ah, uh, which, that's, I've, I've never heard that story, to be honest with you. That's why I'm like, hmm, I wonder, like, what's her inspiration of majoring on 2D animation? Because, oh, uh, yeah. I don't conversation <laughs> at all. No, it, it's okay. It's understandable. Um, like, like, she was, again, like, my cousin was the reason why, uh, again, she, like, opened this new world for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was younger than me. She was still a little kid, and I was a little older than her, but because of her and how creative she was, like, again, it inspired me to be like, you know what? I want to tell s stories that, like, impact children her age. Um, uh... I want, you know, I want stories that are, like, I, I just like being creative and imaginative, so I was mm -hmm. like, oh, like, this is what I want to do. And I think... The animation portion also came up more when I got to middle school because we had like a, I don't know if other schools had it or maybe it was rare or not really, I'm not sure, but like uh, I, we had an animation class and it's been a while since we have ever had any uh, classes like that before. So I took it and like, I was like, yes, this is good. <laughs> like I was working on a, like a mini project for a homework assignment and like I would like skip lunches and I would oh my like God. <laughs> yeah like I would take the lunch with me though I wouldn't like fully be like I will not eat until okay this okay I'm like okay Ooh. <laughs> I thought you were skipping <laughs> lunches I'm like whoa no no no, no. Eat food. like I no like <laughs> 
I was like, oh, like, I was so invested in this, I think it was Flash, maybe, like, animated Flash, I don't remember fully, but, like, I just really liked the program a lot, and I really wanted to learn more, Mm -hmm. and, like, I would tell my friends, because I would eat lunch with them during middle school, and they're like, oh, where are you going? And I'm like, I have work to do. (laughs) You're, like, so secret about it, like, shh, I have work. Yeah. Uh, Hey, we're back. Um, we had some technical difficulties, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're rolling back on this conversation. Uh, we left off, if I heard you correctly, you had like some classes in high school, if I'm correct? Oh, no, middle school. Oh, middle school. Okay, so that's where you like yeah. started learning more about animation and such? Uh, yes, we had um, an animation class. I think I mentioned I like take my lunches there to work on a project. Mm-hmm. And I like I was mentioning before, I guess, I don't know, if, like I, it caught me off fully, but like sometimes the Flash program didn't really work that well. And, and I was a bit dumb on my end. So uh, I remember the teacher mentioned it once where she's like, hey, guys, make sure you like save your work in different flash drives, because uh, sometimes this program would just shut down by itself and it would just delete everything you did. Mm-hmm. But I didn't pay attention when she said that. I did hear her, but, like, I guess I just was so focused on working on this project that I, like, really didn't consider it too much. Mm -hmm. So when the time finally came for, like, us to show our work, this is the part that really made me a bit sad because I worked so hard to make this project happen, and Mm. obviously Flash crashed. So, yeah, all, all the work that I did was just completely gone. So I was completely distraught. um, And I spoke to my teacher. I was like, hey, I don't think I'll be able to present because my uh, my project was fully, uh, what's the word? Uh, Just, it just fully disappeared. It just deleted uh, itself. The computer, the flash just crashed. And like, there was no way for me to like remake it because the deadline was like today. So she was nice enough to be like, hey, you know, I saw you working on your stuff. You, you're still getting graded. Just make the thumbnail, and that's pretty much it. And I was mm-hmm. just like, ah, oh, okay. But I was, like, so sad about it. But I feel like because of that experience, it made me, like, love animation more, which is weird because I, I think it would have just made me be more angry. But I was like, nah, I learned my lesson, and I, and I still want to make more. I still want to create more. So uh, that's how I also found out I wanted to also focus on animation uh, mm-hmm. alongside with art because I just adore both art as a whole and animation as a whole. So I was like, why not do both? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's always good like to take classes on what you want to like do in life, on like what career, career path you want to go because sometimes I remember people want to like program or they have the mentality of wanting to do something in high school, but then when they're actually taking the courses in college, they're like, nah, this is not for me. Um, I'm going to switch major. And then you're like kind of wasting time and wasting money mm. and resources. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember for me, before I started programming, I took like two courses of programming in high school. And I'm like, oh, I love I love programming. Even though it could be a pain in the butt and a headache, I love it. Mm. So it's, it's nice that you uh, you had the chance to like, you know, use that program and such in middle school. Oh, yeah. It was a good uh, opportunity for mm-hmm. for me to, like, learn more. And, like, I don't know. Animation just sticks out to me a lot. But, like I said, art in general is just it's just something I really enjoyed. So I wanted to pursue it more. I do also remember how uh, how I was recommended to go to Bloomfield. Um, oh, really? I don't, yeah, I do remember how Bloomfield was recommended to me because... Uh, I had a counselor, very nice lady. I don't remember her name. I don't think she's there anymore. But there was a point in the fourth year where we had to speak to our counselors, and they would be like, "Okay, so what do you want to do for your future?" Yep. Um, and they would recommend like colleges that they feel like would fit. So uh, I went to my counselor. She's like, "Oh, what do you want to major in?" I said, "Oh, you know, like two D animation. That's what I really want to do." And she was like polite and sweet about it, and she would like show me all these colleges that she recommended. But she was like oh, if you want, like, a college that's more close to home, like, you should take Bloomfield College. And I'm like, I've never heard of Bloomfield before. What is that? Oh, my God. (laughs) And that was my first time hearing it. And she was just like, oh, you know, it it just started, like, majoring, like, animation majors and game programmers and all that. But, like, Mm -hmm. I feel like that would work for you. Just check it out. Try to see how it looks. And I think you would like it. So I was like, oh, okay. So... Bloomfield was, like, the second college I checked out because mm-hmm. at one point I went to a 
to New York, and I Whoa. think I went to yeah, I went to New York because there was uh I th- again uh, animators and most likely uh, artists may know what this school is called because it, it's it's very well known and very high up. Like it's like a very high high up school for for animators and art uh, art students and like storyboarders and all that. Mm-hmm. But I think it was called CVA. And Stevie, I wanted to check out how that place looked because, again, I during the time Steven Universe was such a massive show, and Rebecca Sugar is like an amazing creator, and she mentioned how she went to school there, and like it was a uh, perfect place to like uh, get the education you need for stuff like this. Like they would really push you to like you know create and learn, and you would have a I think a higher possible chance on like finding a job based around what you want. Okay. Um, yeah, and when I went there, I went with my mom, and when I got there, I'm not gonna lie, this was, like, my dream school, like, I was head over heels in love with how this school was, mm-hmm. because, um, they just had everything that was needed for what I wanted to do, they had, like, a video game room, I guess, for, like, people who wanted to relax and play games, and they had ca- cafes, they had libraries, so you could do your own personal research, uh, they had like little cubicles so i guess they would like have people experience how it feels like to be in a workplace in like in a company if you do work soon for a company Mm -hmm. they had like places where you could paint they have places where i think they have like club activities but it's still based around what you're doing people were like super social it was it was an amazing school but i could tell it was like mad expensive (laughs) yeah especially um, in new york yeah, yeah. So a part of me was like, "Wow, I want to like be here. I want to dorm here." But like, obviously, it was just too expensive, and like, it was too far from home. I think I was just a little homesick. So mm-hmm. Bloomfield was my second choice, and I remember they like showed us around, and like the school was very promising too. They like showed us specific spots and places where like the animation classes would take place, mm-hmm. and like after looking around, like everyone was super friendly. Everyone was very nice. Um, again, the school campus was very big and like again i think i only picked it more because it was more closer for for home but uh it also had the major i wanted so uh, i ended up picking that and that's where i went (laughs) it's funny how you're i can relate to your story because i remember in college i wanted to major in game programming and such and then my counselor because the only college that would be advertised for you know game programming or doing anything with game related stuff is like full sail and such or any californian schools and i went to my counselor and he's telling me all right kiddo what do you want to do and i'm like all right i want to do game program but i think the only options in florida are in california and i'm like dude that's like so far man and he's like no have you have you heard of bloomfield college i'm like nope never heard of that in my life and then he's like <laughs> you should go to it and like go to the open house because they offer game design game program. i'm like oh damn really he's like yeah i'm not playing with you i'm like all right cool i'll check it out and then when i when i checked it out you know um open house it they described um, what the program was, curriculum, and then they showed us technically where we we're going to be at, you and me in Westminster, where, like, where all the classes would be at. But then technically, they, we went to the new cat building. And, like The moment we like got into the school, that's when the new building was finished. You remember that? Yeah, I remember they showed uh, – it was weird because they wouldn't let me go inside when that building was there Mm -hmm. but they would be like oh yeah this is where all the classes are going to take place and i'm like oh cool and i thought they were just gonna go in and show us like where where the classes were but they didn't they were just like yeah that's that's where you're going to take classes and i'm like oh okay thank thank you (laughs) (laughs) at least we're lucky that it finished the moment we got there right or else we would have had to take our classes in the church oh we were going to take our classes in the church (laughs) yeah and and, in westminster Oh, they didn't tell me that. They just were like, "Oh, that's where the that's where your classes are going to be." They didn't say anything like, "Oh, uh, I mean, I could tell it was still in construction a little, but it yeah. was almost done." But they never mentioned anything about the church, so I was just kind of like, "Oh, okay, this is where our classes are going to be. That's cool." Yeah, because most <laughs> of the classes were being held in Westminster. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I so I were like, "Thank God it was finished when we got there." Cause... Yeah, that church is a little little cramped, I guess. Yeah, with a lot of stuff and. Uh. It's all right, but at least we got an upgrade, right? Oh, yes, definitely. Way better. Way better than the church. <laughs> yeah, and I also chose that uh, school, too, because like you were saying, uh, it's close to home. It's closer to where I'm at. Yeah. Well, not close. Pers- well, it's a 30-minute drive from where I'm at to there, but with train, it's like two hours. Like, Jesus. 
Oh, it takes you two hours? Yeah, it takes me like two oh. hours to get there and two hours to come back when I was commuting. Oh, wow. Because, like, for me, I think it would have taken... Because I'm also a commuter. I also take the train as well. Mm-hmm. Um, And it would usually take me, like, uh, maybe, like, an hour. Yeah, probably almost close to an hour. Unless the mm-hmm. trains have delays and it takes longer. But it would always be me going there super early. Um, Sometimes in the morning because both my parents work. And they would drop me off very, like, late. Uh, not late, like, early in the morning. So I would just take the train... Or chill in Secaucus until the train for Montclair shows up. And uh, then I would okay. just be like, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to take it. And then I go to Bloomfield. And if I still have some time left, I will just go and hang out with my friends. I wonder how, like, did you have any problems during, like, um commuting there to Bloomfield? Because oh. sometimes, <laughs> oh, my God, commuting with trains would, like, sometimes piss me off because some of the delays are, like, it'll be, oh, this train is arriving this time. And I'm like, Great, I'm gonna get on class on time. I'm gonna be in campus, and then I, no, it no, the train doesn't show up whatsoever. And then I'm like, dude, what the hell? And then I look at the freaking monitor again. It's like, oh, that train is gone. It never existed. You're gonna have to wait for this other train. I'm like, oh my god, are you serious? Yeah, I I had those issues before, but only when I had to go back home. That was like the worst time mm-hmm. because I mean there were some times where delays do happen, but at least the teachers well professors that I have they were nice enough to be like just email us when you're coming late because like they understood that trains are like kind of kind of you know annoying and stuff so Mm -hmm. I didn't feel too frustrated about like being a little late because at least I gave them a heads up my only issue was just going back home because there's times where like delays do happen or they just straight up get canceled yeah so I'm just like and it's I'm still in Secaucus that's usually when it happens when I'm in Secaucus so I'm just like just sitting on a bench waiting and I'm thinking man I really hope I get there on time because I don't want to like get uber um late at night uh I would just get frustrated mostly when I'm trying to get home but that's my only time when I got frustrated I I do remember my first time like commuting and the only class I've always had an issue with not to the point where like the teacher was like, well, I can't keep saying teacher. Uh, the professor was, like, mad. She wasn't, like, mad at all. She was still nice about it. But, like, I felt bad because that was the class I had the biggest issue, like, making on time. Uh-huh. Because I wasn't used to waking up so early uh, during freshman year. So I would go on the train and th- and I would feel really tired. So I would just end up, like, thinking, I'll just take a little nap. And I'm pretty sure I'll, oh, somebody or just me alone would wake up when I get to Secaucus. Mm-hmm. But every time I wake up, that was when the train would leave Secaucus, and I'm like, oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I I end up going all the way to New York, and then I'm just, like, there, and I'm, like, panicking, because it was my first time commuting by myself, so I was just panicking, because I was like, oh, what do I do? You thought that's So, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is not, it wasn't even, like, the first time either. Like, I think five times in a row. Mm-hmm. You'd think I'd learned my lesson, but no. Because, <laughs> like, the first time really traumatized me, and I was like, oh, no, I, I don't want to do this again. But then I, I think I was just so tired, so. Uh, that's that's perfectly understandable, because I remember when I was commuting, I had to wake up, like, around 5-ish, 6-ish, I think somewhere around that time. And then I got to leave my house, like, at 7 to catch the, uh, the light rail train and then the, the rail train, the big train, the mm-hmm. bigger train. Yeah. Yeah. At least I'm. I'm also glad that I don't have. I'm not the only one with a story that like you know missed or stopped, because I forgot what I'll be doing when I'm in my train, uh, going to because, obviously I think, it sounds like you were doing this too that you have to get on one stop and then you get off of that like station and then you got to catch another train right? Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. For me, I had to do that as well, but I usually had to stop by New York uh, Broad Street, and then when. I think I usually just be on my phone or something, just listening to music and thinking about stuff, whatever. And then it takes me like a minute to realize, like once this train starts moving, I'm like, oh, crap, I'm supposed to get off of here. No, where is this taking me? And, <laughs> and I think it takes me like to East Orange or somewhere like that. And I'm like, crap, oh my God. I, I won't forget this one time. It was pouring. And then I, I missed my stop and I just kept going straight. I'm like, oh my God, dude, I'm going to miss class. And then I'm like, how far is the walk from here to Bloomfield? It was like an hour walk. I'm like, why would I go back home? I have like another class after. Might as well just walk in there. And then my, mm-hmm. I went to the class just soaked. At least I brought like a new, I had a new pair of clothes in my backpack. I don't know why. 
Or I think I had like a shirt and then like I had like a tank top under it. Or I think I had oh. like a long sleeve under it because it was, I think it was in the winter time somewhere around there. But yeah, it, oh my God, it was terrible. And then my uh, professor was like, what happened to you? I'm like, oh, look, I, I missed my stuff. I had to walk an hour and, and now I'm here. And she's like, oh my gosh, you still came here after all that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I'm like, oh. look, professor, I have another class after. What's the point of going back home and missing two classes? I'll just like miss half of yours. And she's like, that's perfectly fine. I understand it, but... You should have just gone home. I'm like, look, man, it doesn't matter. Yeah, at least, um, at least she was like very nice about it. Uh, mm-hmm. like I said, like my my uh, I I think it was math or algebra. I don't remember, but like my pres- my professor was also nice because like there were times where like I practically missed her entire class anyways, but I still would come up and be like, I'm so sorry, I'm late, and she was just like, No, it's fine. It's a good thing you emailed me. So like she would tell me what I missed, and she would say, As long as you like you know, make up the work, and you, like, send it to me, then you should be fine. Like, I understand it's difficult for you to, like, get here on time, so. Yeah. She, bless her heart, like I said, I feel like there's not a lot of prof- professors that would, like, help students out during those situations, but she was so polite, and she was so kind, and she really gave me the benefit of the doubt, and she was like, yeah, just as long as you do the work and bring it to me, you're you're passing the class. Uh, the attendance won't affect you, because I know it's difficult for you, and I'm just like, thank you. <laughs> Oh, wait. I'm so glad, thankful. We're talking about writing, right? Uh, it wasn't writing. It was like math for me. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Because I think we yeah. had like the same writing teacher, if I remember correctly, as well. Did we? Yeah, she's like an old, an old sweet lady. Uh, old sweet lady. Mm. I don't recall. I don't think I took a lot of writing classes. Because I remember before um, um, my class would start, I would see you, Jamil, and somebody else come out that I know. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Like, I, I apologize. Like, my memory is just so, like, all over the place. Mm-hmm. So there, there's some things that I would fully remember that other people can't remember. And then when people are like, oh, yeah, do you remember this thingy you did? Or, like, do you remember how, like, this thing happened? And I was just like, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> nah, that's all cool. Was, was, yeah, I would just be like, was was I good at that situation? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Even though we, you and I were struggling through uh, commuting and such, we still like got our work done in even like our graduation project, which is Capstone. And oh, would yeah. you like to share like some of the what kind of work you did for your graduation project? Uh, sure. First off, usually before we started doing like actual Capstone work, my professor, uh, she would uh, tell us that we got to, like, go through the ropes of, like, storyboarding, writing scripts, and, like, making character designs, you know, t- to get the experience and how to, like, you know, fully see how it is to make, like, a short film, mm-hmm. which I thought was great. Like, pre-capstone was, like, a great experience. I was so excited for, like, uh, everything, basically. Storyboarding was pretty hard, though, because I did stay up super late at night to try to storyboard what I need to storyboard, oh but it was God. so worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was, like, that dedicated. I was, like, I loved the idea I had, and I really wanted to make the short, like, uh, if I remember, yeah, the genre was, like, romance and, like, suspense? Suspense is a word? <laughs> yeah, guys, her um, short film was really cute. I'll put a link to it on the description. Oh, thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot um, of people loved it. But, Oh, I'm so glad because um, I know during um, when we actually started doing capstone work, like that was that was a struggle. That was a lot of difficulty because um, I'm sure whoever's listening right now, like I mean, at this point we were we're all in this together. Like we were the pandemic hit. That's what kind of mm-hmm. occurred, and yeah. um, it was so hard trying to make up the work because everyone is scheduled to do a specific time on when they're supposed to do their scenes like um and my schedule was all over the place because aside from the pandemic hitting um I also worked in the college still but I wasn't a lab assistant I think I was more well I think technically I still was wasn't I like I was working downstairs with you know you and Jamil and Melissa but I think we were what we what was what was the title that we had when we were what, downstairs? Like com- what year was this? Like second year or third year? Uh, I think it was third year, wasn't it? Uh, no, third wait, year. Maybe? I remember I was working in the equipment lab, 
for oh time. there we go yeah i think it was the i don't think it was third i don't know my memory is bad but but I, yeah equipment lab that's what we were doing um but aside from like me taking in a lot of courses and doing equipment lab work i had a little time to work on capstone i had to like stay up a little late to work on my stuff and even that was still difficult because i'm not used to staying up so late so it was it was just hard to make this project happen and like i still feel like i could have done more to make it more polished up because i i'm a perfectionist i like making things neat i like making things you know fleshed out i i like things being per perfected obviously because i'm a yeah. perfectionist. <laughs> so i had to like remake some character designs because <laughs> I remember this. It was so funny. I don't know why it made me laugh so, but like when I made the male character, mm -hmm. uh, his design in the short was a little different compared to how his original concept was. Um, like the hair was the same, the outfit was the same. It was just like the face, because like my professor saw it and she looked at it and she was like, "Oh, your your female character is really cute, but my issue is, is that the male character looks like a homeless like a homeless guy. He looks oh a little bit God. like a bum." <laughs> Yeah, she was like, can you, like, can you, like, fix it? Because, like, I don't see myself dating this character because he looks kind of gross. I'm like, oh, that's the point. He's supposed to look <laughs> gross. <laughs> so, like, all I did was just, like, I was thinking, okay, how do I change the face? Because that's her only issue. So I just put, like, two little dot eyes and a little smiley face. And she's like, you know what? This is a character I would like to date. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so I was just like, I guess I fixed it. <laughs> But, like, uh, another thing, too, that, like, she brought up that I feel, like, is important was she wanted people to make characters. And I like that are unique because uh, having something unique is very hard to come by. Um, yeah. Because you'll always have, like, like this, this thing where, not thing, but it happens to every artist or animator or just a character designer where they make something. And then someone would, like, be behind and be like, oh, that reminds me of for example uh overwatch character design or this character reminds me of like steven universe i, I had that comment a couple of times when i made the girl character because mm -hmm. um again I, I don't dislike steven universe i adore steven universe so having someone compliment my character and be like oh this character looks like this show that i really like i didn't have an issue with it but my only concern was i didn't want people to look at my short and then they see these characters and be like oh this character looks like X, Y, and Z, and that's why they'll only associate that character mm -hmm. with that other character that already exists. So my professor was trying to tell all of us, make sure you make a design where it just doesn't look too similar to the point where people will just associate that one character to a bunch of other characters that already exist. You want it to be associated by your own work, right? Yeah, that's basically my my main concern as well. But like, it, it was some trials and tribulations, um, and I didn't have a professor that knew Toon Boom that much until Antoine came around, and I was very surprised when Antoine knew more about it, so I was like, I wish I would have known sooner, because, mm -hmm. like, he, he was so helpful, and I appreciated him helping me and giving me advice on how to make the camera function work, because I didn't know that that was a thing until he showed me. I was like, oh, wow, if I knew sooner, this would have looked so much better. <laughs> But, like, he was so helpful, and I, I and I appreciate him. I still do, because he's such an amazing professor, and he's just so helpful, and he's really funny, and, like, he, he's super patient. Like, he really didn't make me feel like I was in a rush. He didn't make me feel like my work was, like, not terrible. Like, he, he, he has such a great, you know, way of, like, approaching things when it comes to, like, again, the programming and how to, like, put up specific scenes or how to make, like, the room look a little different so it could give a good... A good environment for the character so that i really do appreciate but yeah i had to pull some all-nighters to make my capstone work and it was hard it was hard yeah yeah i can imagine like the process that like goes to like you know bring like a short film or just a cartoon or an anime in general like you know bring it bring it to life right mm -hmm. it's like a lot of work right yeah definitely um especially with like providing a lot of animated movements because half a semester isn't enough to produce a full uh fledged film like if people want i mean that's a good learning experience because at least you know like how long it takes to make a full-fledged film and it's you're only one person so yeah. it takes a very long time to make it like if you have multiple animators and people like i can't say it doesn't take any longer but at least there's there's a shorter period, I guess, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Like the 
the workload won't be as much as for one person. Yes, that that yeah. I was trying to figure out how to word it, but you worded it better. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I was just one person, so um, it was hard producing it because like I, I had more to show, but like I also asked Charles. Actually, I showed Charles my work, and even Charles was like giving me some really great advice, and he was like, "I feel like if you want to like cut a bit of the workload, then try to cut the story a bit shorter." Which the t the professor also did point that out as well, where it's like. Sometimes it's hard to show everything you want to show. So cutting things is very good. Mm -hmm. It's not always yeah. bad. What, yeah. That's important. Yeah. So as long as you need to reach your deadline and as long as you could still be able to produce what you want to tell, then that's good. It's never bad to refix things. It's never bad to look back and be like, you know what, I can change this or change that. Like, it's never too late to do that. Or cut things um, just, up. Yeah, that too. Like, uh, it's it's... It's not good to be stuck for so long. Being stuck just isn't a good place to be in. So yeah, because I, it'll be hard for some people like to cut some things out because you know they'll be like, "Oh, I need this," but you're like, you have to think realistically and think of your time frame and how much time you have to do all that work. And you yeah. know, you're gonna have to do like the hard thing, just cut it out if you can't do it, right? Uh, yes, definitely. I think after my professor watched some of the scenes I did, uh, she she also kind of gave me a piece of advice as well because. Obviously, because of how the time was, she was like, you know what, I feel like, you know, it's not bad to be a perfectionist, but, like, focus on coloring and inking stuff later. Just try to get as much done as you can. If you still have time, then you can go back and fix it, because it looks like I was focusing way too long on trying to clean and color, and that wasn't, that was taking so long, and it looks like if I kept focusing on that, I wouldn't have been able to fully complete the ending, uh -huh. so her kind of just saying yeah just focus on animating as much as you can and if you're able to finish just you can go back and do what you got to do but it's not good for you to stay in that one specific scene or one specific spot because it's not it's it's not gonna finish everything else on its own so mm -hmm. you gotta really focus on that so i was like yeah i gotta do that so it was a little hard but at least i it finally finished yep. um and i'm glad it's out so <laughs> it's, it's nice um yeah, I, I think it's cute. I, I I wanted to give it, like I said, a bit of romance and suspense, and I just wanted something very cute, very simple. Um, mm -hmm. Simplicity is good. That's important. Even though I don't show, like, I'm into romance, the genre, or, like, it's not, like, something I'm hardcore for, but, like, I like seeing everything once in a while. So, like, when I saw your capstone, I'm like, I think I kind of know what kind of the route this is going to go, and it's kind of cute. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. But um, even though, you know how, like, sometimes there'll be different animators to do, like, all kinds of work and such to, like, split the mm -hmm. workload, like I was saying before? Yeah. What, there's some series that, like, make them go, like, crunch time, right? Yeah, I, I think so, because, like, like I said, I was working on my stuff on my own, but, mm -hmm. like, I did see my other classmates, like, um, work on their projects. The, the ones that really stuck out to me the most was, like, I forgot, I think it was, like, I know one of the twin sisters was called Leanne. But both of them, like, would pull all-nighters. Like, it's crazy how they pulled all-nighters because they would, like, stay awake till, like, maybe, like, 5 in the morning to finish oh, up their yeah. work. Or, like, 5 or 4 in the morning. I, I only saw, like, one of their Snapchats, but they would even talk about the – to, to that to the professor saying, oh, yeah, like, we're just really tired. Like, we, we work so so late at night and in the afternoon, so we're just going go to go to sleep, um, like, right now after this class is over. And I'm just like, whoa. Jesus like, Christ. They – yeah, they were so dedicated, and I'm just sitting here like, wow, I wonder if I can do that, but I, I wasn't able to push myself the way they were able to to do that type of all-nighter, so I was just, like, very impressed by how hard they were working. But I, but their shorts came out really great as well, and they, they, those two were, like, one of my favorite shorts, and also Brianna's uh, was pretty cool as well, because, like, it's, it was very unique. I like the sketchy art style that she gave to it. Mm -hmm. um, her character was just adorable, and the colors were just, mm, chef kiss. It was so good. <laughs> chef kiss. <laughs> <laughs> chef kiss. It was really, really good. Everyone did their best. Also, um... I forgot what his name was. I think it, it. I know it was called Mammoth. Mammoth was also really well produced. I know his name was like Matthew. I don't. I don't know. Oh yeah. Matthew. Matthew Link. 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 Mm -hmm. Link. Yeah. His, his shout out to him as well. Like his work was just great. Like I. It was really well produced. It was. I think he did most of it with motion capture. I could be wrong, but like it. It was just amazing. It was really great. Um, seeing it. 
And I'm trying to figure out who else I enjoy watching. Oh, also, um, I forgot what his short was called, but it was so cute. It was, like, a little brown mole, and it was, like, just hoarding stuff. And, like, he ends up, like, throwing the, the, the stuff back in the hole. I really like that. It was such a cute oh, story as well. <laughs> Yeah, it was there too, but I don't remember his name, and I feel so bad because he was—he did such a great job as well. It was so impressive. Mm. Um, I was really proud of all my classmates because they also worked their hardest to produce what they got to produce, and and they some of them did fully finish it. And I'm just like, it still looks great. Like no matter what, they they did a wonderful job. Mm. That's really nice. Like how those people that are dedicated enough to like you know put the time and effort to their capstone, and then like it, it shows, right? Like. The mm-hmm. work they mouth they do, and you can see like my guess by just by watching the film, right? Yeah, just watching the film alone, you can just see how much they worked, and it's it's it just looks good. It looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I remember I watched this video yesterday of like how um, Violet Evergarden was like created, and there was like a lot of people just putting their blood and soul into that freaking anime, and th- they got it done. Like I think like the first three episodes, they got it done within a couple of months, if I'm correct. And like, really? Yeah, I was surprised. I'm like, holy hell, did they all this like within a couple of months? It's, it's so it's so beautiful, dude. Oh my god, it's yes. crazy. And then once they got like the green light to continue on, it it, it shows like how dedicated these people were to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, just to, just to say something real quick. Um, anybody who's listening, please watch Violet Evergarden. Like, yes. it's so worth it. It's such a beautiful like piece of art beautifully animated the characters are so amazing oh my gosh like it, it's just gonna it, it always puts your mind in a state of like i can't believe that like this an, and like animation and like art exists in such a in such a like in a piece of media like this is just amazing and guys it's not like only the art that's beautiful in this show is like the story is like so well too would mm-hmm. you agree yeah. Yeah, yes like- definitely because I remember uh, I bought the art book, and I remember we were like, me and her were looking around through the page, and we're like, dude, holy hell, look at all the detail they put into this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Charles was holding the book, wasn't he? I think so, yeah. Yeah, Charles was there, I remember, and Charles was like, like, <laughs> Charles was like making sounds, like he was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was so funny, but even I was like, oh my god, this is so pretty. Like, it was so gorgeous. I was so jealous. I was like, damn, I want this art book. Like, it was so pretty. <laughs> yeah, like, not only the characters, and but also the setting and such. Like, how nice and the color just, you know, vibrates and such. So, so pretty to look at. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, dude, all this work is it's so great. Yeah, and um, aside from the anime, we have, like, like movies obviously the movies connected to violet evergarden yeah. and it's also still a beautiful piece it's amazing too right uh, yeah i was watching that i think a couple of days ago and it the mu the the music the art the story jesus Christ. I, I i'm trying to think of one flaw like to say for you but i can't think of one to be honest with you it's maybe it it's maybe because i'm biased because i love the show so much <laughs> but dude oh my god i love this show to death and I can't wait it, for it, the movie. Yeah, same. Uh, I feel to me at least there's like no flaws. It's just it's it's perfect. I love it too. <laughs> yeah, oh my, it's so great. And another like show that like caught my eye, like how like nice and the artwork, like how the characters look and such, is um Bunny Girl Senpai. I don't know. When I look at like the art, I remember I was watching it, and then I think Charles was watching it too. When I started watching it, I'm like, dude, is it me or like the art style looks like? pretty damn good it looks kind of nice even though it's kind of simple but i find it kind of cute to be honest yeah see i, I remember hearing about this before because i was watching um a youtuber and, and he was called the anime man um mm-hmm. and he would like show like oh like an anime list and he's like oh what to watch for this season mm-hmm. and when he uh, came to bunny girl senpai he only read the summary and just the summary they they really did the show dirty because they were like uh, the way it was summarized was like, oh, it's just a girl wearing a bunny suit, and it looks like it. <laughs> That's all they said. They were just like, oh, it's this girl wearing a bunny suit, and like it, it looks like it was going through like an etchy kind of route, and like that automatically kind of turned me off seeing the poster because mm-hmm. like seeing the poster I was like, oh, it's so pretty, and it looks kind of weird, 
But the summary just kind of was, like, not doing it justice. So uh, after, yeah, after like, at first I wasn't going to see it because of that. But, like, after it finally came out, people were, like, praising it. People were, like, yo, uh, yeah. the summary was... Yeah, the summary did it dirty, like, please give it a watch. <laughs> and even the anime man, like, heard the comments, and he was like, oh, shit. So he went back. <laughs> um, so when I finally saw it, like, it was my type of show. I like psychological stuff. I like mystery. I like I, I like comedy. I like... They had a bit of romance there as well, but I like how it wasn't just entirely romance-based. It yeah. was like, yeah, there's all this weird stuff happening, and we have to figure out what's going on. And I just loved it. It was cool, and it was really well-written. Yeah, I remember um, the the way I watch it. <laughs> I saw a meme. It's like, oh, this is Bunny Girl Senpai to describe it. Quantum physics meets love. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> what does that oh, mean? <laughs> I'm like, all right, whatever. Funny, it is, yeah. What happened? <laughs> Oh, I said, when you, like, think about it, yeah, it actually does. Make yeah, sense. and then, like, when, well, before I watched it, like, what the hell are they talking about? How does that make sense? And then, like, I looked at it, I'm like, okay, now I get it, okay. But, yeah, See, when I watched the show, it was great, too. I'm like, oh, my, I'm glad I started watching this show, too. Yeah, the the thing, too, was, like, uh, you told me that a movie came out, and you and Charles went to see it. Yeah, oh, my God, that movie. I don't want to say anything for, like, because, guys, she hasn't watched the movie at all. And, yeah, uh, I really haven't. <laughs> I wish she, I wish she had. It's so good. Oh my god. And I think yeah. that's. No, nah, I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> no, nah, I, I was gonna say something. I'm like, no, nah, I'm just not gonna say anything. I really don't want to say anything for you. Me. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if I if I was like, oh shoot! You imagine you just put spoiler warning and you just say it anyway. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> even if I want to say spoiler warning, you, you're still gonna hear it, and I don't want to spoil anything for you to be honest. Because yeah, that, that's, that movie's that's a watch. True. Yeah, um, I'm just waiting to like. I guess I find a good a good copy that has like English subtitles or something. Because the only ones I keep finding is like mostly in Japanese, and as you know, I cannot speak Japanese, so I don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean the. It's understandable that um, it's a different experience once you like read the subtitle. You know what they're saying and such. Mhm. Mm yeah, but honestly enough, surprisingly, I remember me and another friend. We were like saying, "Oh, what's uh, your top anime?" And I remember like me, easy number one is Violet Evergarden, and Charles's um top anime is uh, Bunny Girl. Oh really? Yeah. After the movies, like it's Bunny Girl, hundred <laughs> percent. I'm like, wow, dude. So he's like, yep funny girl mm. but yeah if you guys yeah. haven't seen any of those two shows give it a watch mm -hmm. oh yes definitely a hundred percent it's like so worth your time um and it's just like it's it's a really amazing storytelling it's very unique as well mm -hmm. and it's not even that long either it's like what 12 episodes for like each of them um i think so i think violet evergarden had more episodes because they, they had like side side uh parts as well like it's weird i mean i watched it on netflix but like the way netflix set it up was like yes you have season one and then you have like a a oh, side yeah, anime OVA. but it's like a christmas one yeah the ova and i was like why is that not with season one because i feel like it should be in, i don't know netflix was weird when it formatted it but like you could still find it and it's it had more episodes and movies compared to uh, Bunny Girl Senpai. So, mm -hmm. but both are good nonetheless. Yeah, I would say that. I still got to watch some more anime because <laughs> I barely watched any so far this year. Because <laughs> I only watched, I think, two, which is, um, oh, um, the romance anime my friends were bothering me about and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Those are the only two I watch. Oh, yeah. I've only seen, let me think. I think I've only watched, like, I think I've also watched, like, no, ah, wait, time out. <laughs> I'm, like, trying to figure it out. I was just, like, how many anime shows did I watch this month? I watched Cardcaptor Sakura, which is a very, very old anime series. That was, like, my first time seeing it. It was made in 1993. I mean, you could tell the art style alone. You could tell it's pretty old, but the story is good. I watched Paranoia Agent, which this was my first time fully seeing it, and it's such a... It's such a mind bender. Oh my god. Like I love psychological stuff. So Paranoia Agent is such a highly recommended one on my mm -hmm. book because if you like psychological and like mystery and like kind of a bit of like maybe blood and gore, then it's a good show for people to watch. And I've seen a comedy one that actually I, I recommended to Charles and Charles actually fully watched it. Mm -hmm. And it was called My Life as a Villainess, uh all routes oh no, all routes lead to doom. 
and it was so funny. It was so funny. It was so good. Very unique as well, when, and has a unique take on harem, like a reverse harem um, that I haven't seen in a very long time, so I appreciate that. Uh. And I'm trying to remember what another one I've seen. Hmm. I think it's just those three so far. Mm. Yeah, it's just those three, but they're so good. Oh my god, so much good stuff to watch. I think we could mm-hmm. keep on going with like shows of what we like and stuff. So I think I'm gonna oh, yeah. conclude it here <laughs> before <laughs> like we go on for like an hour, an hour or so. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you want to like say any of your social medias to the audience so they know where to follow you at and such? Oh yeah, sure. So I have a YouTube channel and it's called Philio One, and I do have an Instagram as well. And my Instagram is Field of Sketch Forty Two. So if you guys like to see more of my work or would you like to see more of my content, please follow those two if you'd like. Mm-hmm. And you guys, please uh, give her short film a watch. It's, 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 it's very short. It's like what, like a minute or 30 seconds? It is a minute and 31 seconds. Oh, I just added those two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but yeah, even though it's like a minute and 30 it's nice and cute to watch. Yeah, it is. So if you guys would like to see it, um, it, again, it's in my YouTube channel. I do also have some, like, animation memes and stuff if you'd like to see that as well. And, like, if you want to see more of my art- artwork, like I said, my Instagram, it is Field of Sketch 42 if you'd like to see that as well. Mm-hmm. I'll put it down in the description too and below just in case, you know, they just want to click it from there and such. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's fine as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, um, that concludes for Percast Episode 4, and thank you again for joining us. See you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.